Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is JB coming to you live. I am 100% permanent total. Navy does the storm veteran. And the reason why I'm shooting this video today, I was just thinking about the whole filing process. <clears throat> and I just got a question to ask you guys. Don't you guys find it kind of funny that, you know, you can select the fully developed claim and you're sending, sending all the supporting documents. And if there's more information that they need to gather, then they take you out of the fully developed claim and use it as a standard claim, meaning time-wise, fully developed claims are the, are the fastest way to get a decision. However, I was just thinking, if you ever filed your claim before, and if you ever got your service treatment records, isn't there more than some things that's in there that you haven't filed for yet, and why they don't recommend it? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna repose that question real quick. You know, you got things in your service treatment records uh, that you haven't claimed yet, why isn't it a service to us as veterans to say, hey, listen, we see this ankle injury. Um, why don't you file for this ankle injury? We see this in your service treatment records. Why don't you file for it? Why they don't recommend it in your decision letters? Why they don't recommend secondary claims? How to file secondary claims in your decision letter? You know, they always talk about when you get a decision, you know, the reason for a decision, whether you're service connected or not. And they're always talking about duty to assist, right? Duty to assist the veteran. So when you file a claim, they have a duty to assist you, right? So if they have a duty to assist, wouldn't they recommend certain things? Like tinnitus, for instance, just by your MOS, your job title? There should be job titles that's flagged uh, for tinnitus claims and should be recommended. But see, the VA is reactive like most of our government programs. They're not proactive. And so it burns me up when I see guys uh, sitting there with a PTSD claim and they got a CPAP machine at home and they're not service connected for sleep apnea secondary to the PTSD. Uh, or they may have hypertension as a service connection and they're not getting paid for erectile dysfunction uh, as a special monthly compensation because of the high blood pressure uh, or the PTSD medication has caused erectile dysfunction. Why are they not proactive with the veterans and say, hey, listen, instead of you filing direct, you should have filed secondary and go a step further. But if they care for us so much and they thank us for our service, every November 11th. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. Come on in and get your free Starbucks. Come on in and get your free IHOP. Come on in and get your I Applebee. If they were so much into thanking you for your service, that's the best way to thank veterans. In my opinion, is to provide a proactive service and say, listen, you know, you should be filing secondary instead of direct. You should be adding this as a secondary to increase your claim and this is how you do it. But they just tell you to just file. And so you got a lot of applications that would never be adjudicated in that time frame for fully developed claims because they don't have enough evidence. Or you hung up in the appeals process because you didn't you didn't file it the correct correct way. It's a lot of things that could be done to speed up the process, but to do it correctly. So I encourage every last one of you that are listening to my voice right now to really understand your service treatment records, understand every line item that you went to sit call for and make sure that you have a current diagnosis for every last one of them and you should be proactively thinking about secondary claims from the jump because the God made this body a very uh, magnificent body, extraordinary body and even so that most everything in our bodies are connected, right? Um, you would be surprised how much the back controls your body. You will be surprised how much the respiratory system has to do with so many other ailments. Uh, You'll be surprised of hypertension that has every, that high blood pressure can, can give you things like strokes and things of that nature. And we are not medically inclined as veterans or licensed as doctors to even think like that. So 
I want you guys to know, if you're not being told these things by the VA and you're not being told these things by the VSOs and the lawyers and things of that nature, how to file it correctly, how to look at these 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 connections and why is, you know, how could I get uh, sinusitis to, to, uh, to be uh, aggravating my sleep apnea or, you know, filing a claim as sleep apnea secondary to sinusitis or rhinitis. Why is it that I have to, you know, do all this research because it's up to you? and nobody else is up to you and your family you have an obligation you have a responsibility and a duty to take care of you and your family nobody else is going to say hey come on let me just give you some free money some tax free money come on let me just give you a hundred percent a hundred percent permanent total it's highly unlikely it's sad but true there's a lot of you right now that are watching this video right now that has a hundred percent and don't even know it the formula for for hundred percent. I want you to understand this formula. Write this down. If you're watching this, you got to have a seventy, a fifty, another fifty, another ten, and another ten. Let me just do this math with you. Seventy and a fifty is an eighty-five. Eighty-five and a fifty is a ninety-three. Ninety-three and a ten is a ninety-four. And a ninety-four and a ten is a ninety-five. When you have ninety-five combined ratings, they round up to the hundred percent. So if you don't have a 70 somewhere, you're never going to get to 100. If you don't have at least 250 somewhere or 230s to compensate for the 50, you'll never see 100%. Okay? And the way you're going to do that is through intermediate steps and secondary claims. Because you don't know that your left knee can aggravate uh, pain in your right knee. You don't know that uh, deviated septum can aggravate sleep apnea. You better, you better get the right advice from the right person. Use the law to your advantage and get a high value claim that you and your family deserve. Thank you so much for watching this. I'm getting ready to fly. I'm in the airport right now. I just had to shoot this video, let you guys know I care about you guys, but you gotta care about yourself and take ownership. You have a responsibility, obligation, and a duty to get a high value claim. Talk to you soon, out.